For this lab, we used textbooks, chairs, and tables to provide us a place to drop the doll. We then tied a rope to the Barbie's feet and attached two rubber bands to that rope. Each test had three trials, so we performed three trials with those two rubber bands and kept adding two more rubber bands for each test until we had 14 rubber bands in total. Also, energy had a significant role while we did our trials. When we first positioned the Barbie before we dropped it, gravitational potential energy was already in effect because energy is being stored right before gravity acts and the doll falls. As it falls because of gravity, gravitational potential energy is converted into kinetic energy since the doll is in the motion of falling. But then, it comes to a temporary stop because this time kinetic energy is converted into elastic potential energy. The energy the Barbie had as it fell was then transferred into the stretchy system of rubber bands, making the rubber band store that energy until retracting back into its original state. We then recorded our measurements and we plotted them on a graph in which we were able to draw a line of best fit. We then used the slope intercept form y equals mx plus b and change the variables making the equation into df equals m times r plus b. df was said earlier as 479 centimeters, my calculated slope was 14, and the y-intercept which is the height of the Barbie doll is about 27 centimeters. We then got a result of 32 rubber bands. When we finally tested our prediction, it was a bit off because according to my partner Zach, the rubber bands used for the final test were new and fresh, while the ones used for our trials were stretchy and worn out. After a couple of trials for our final test, it took about 32 to 35 rubber bands for it to reach the ground. And that concludes our experiment. Mm -hmm.